Welcome! Coming back now to continue what we have left before. Now we are on the most important and most critical part of our application, which is authentication. Actually, till now, because Blazor WebAssembly is still in the preview edition and it's totally client side, so authentication is not a straightforward process. Like before, we have uh, granted the access token and user info, but now we have to set that and implement an authentication mechanism like let the not authorized user to access, uh, don't let the unauthorized user to access the home component plans or the component that we were going to create uh, after, and also implement logout, <coughs> uh, redirect users to the login page if he's not uh, logged in or he's not authenticated and he's trying to reach uh, plans, home page, dashboard, or whatever. So, now we will see how we can implement that step by step. Actually, it's, it needs a little bit of work. I will try to simplify the process as much as I can. But after that, the good thing is you're going to understand everything from scratch because somehow we will use purely the everything that Blazor provides to us. We are not using anything already exists like <laughs> maybe in the near future when Microsoft releases new preview editions, or the release version of Blazor WebAssembly, there is going to be a built-in authentication mechanism like any other ASP.NET Core templates, individual user accounts, Azure Active Directory, or whatever. But for now, we will implement that from scratch. Another positive thing is, if you understand that very well, every time you want to build a Blazor application, you can just clone the GitHub repository of uh, this project uh, take the authentication part, you can uh, manipulate it in the way you want, or you can use it the same and complete. You don't have to rewrite everything from scratch. So, to implement that, first, we should receive the access token and user info. We have already done that. The second thing is to store that info in the local storage of the browser. So, we will learn how you can, how we will use the local storage of the browser from uh, Blazor. After that, uh, Blazor provides us with something called Authentication State Provider, which returns the current state of the user. Here, we will create our own. Actually, uh, the user in ASP.NET in general called a Claims Principle, which is set of claims, like this user is defined by a set of claims, each claim is about key and value, for example, name identifier for the ID, email for the email, first name, contain the first name of the user, last name, etc. Maybe you have other things like phone or whatever. So we'll create a custom authentication provider that will create that user or create an instance of type claims principle that contains the access token, ID, first name, last name of that user. After that, we can use this <coughs> to use authorize a view which will let us redirect the user to the login page if he is not logged in or try to access some protected resources he's, he's, he doesn't, um, he shouldn't like access that and many other things. Also, we can retrieve the current user info, like the first name, the last name from any component using uh, the user property provided by the context in Blazor. Then we can set authorized property to some components like any component that the user, if he wants to access it, he has to be authenticated. So you can use the authorized attribute on top of the component to make it, to protect that. At the end, we can create the logout function. So in the next video, we will start by store the access token and user info. See you.